This is George talking to Mike Tyson, bro. He should have never gave you his money. Peasants. They're peasants. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, Mike, Mike, come on. Jet Blue, Mint Flight. My boy just got beat up by Mike Tyson. Just trying to ask for an autograph, man. I don't know what happened. Welcome to Jobbed Out, the wrestling editorial that reminds you not to mess with the Mike Tyson mystery team. I got that fight or flight feeling again, and I'm flighting. Oh, sorry, sir. I tell you. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. You know, I'm actually a little pissed off to have to talk about this. Not because of the story itself, not because of the people involved, but because I was planning to talk about Shelly Martinez and Rebel with the Today in Wrestling History video. Well, let's go ahead and see but no! Some guy has to be a jerk on a plane again, so here we go. This is what happened. WWE Hall of Famer and forgotten member of AEW's inner circle, Iron Mike Tyson, was spotted boarding a flight from San Francisco to Miami. Recognized by fans because who's not going to recognize this guy? The passenger behind Tyson started causing a scene. His friend filmed the interaction and gave the footage to TMZ, so I apologize for both the watermark and the edits because a lot of context between the clips that we got appear to have been cut out. Anyway, the guy behind Tyson got increasingly aggressive. Maybe from adrenaline, maybe drugs and alcohol, I don't know, and officially nothing's been speculated. But this is not the behavior of a sane person meeting a celebrity. What's not shown in the video, but occurred based on witness accounts, is that this guy refused to chill out or leave Tyson alone. At one point, he hit Mike Tyson, former World Heavyweight Boxing Champion Mike Tyson, with a water bottle. So what do you think happened here? The result is the dumbest and most egregiously offensive part of the video that this guy's friend took. Jet blue, mint flight. My boy just got beat up by Mike Tyson. Just trying to ask for an autograph, man. I don't know what happened. I may get demonetized for this one, but fuck you. Even your own video shows he wasn't just asking Tyson for an autograph. Your guy caused a scene. He refused to calm down when asked to. He escalated when Tyson tried to ignore him and then got a receipt for not acting like an adult. Tyson was escorted off the plane, rightfully so, and the guy also got off so he could receive medical attention and file a police report. We'll have to see what happens, but I expect a cash settlement, so congrats on your payday, jerkass. But this raises a question. This guy claims to have been a fan. After all, he wanted an autograph, right? So why has it become so increasingly common for fans to show such entitlement that they can disrespect and violate the privacy of celebrities? This isn't just a Mike Tyson has a temper thing, although he does. There's been a growing issue of entitlement and behaviors that just aren't okay over the years. In 2021, Rey Mysterio was surprised at home by a fan who had found his home address online, randomly showed up with a box of toys, and asked him to autograph a bunch of things. Once again, at his home, on his own time. Granted, Mysterio has a good heart and he did it, but at what point is somebody who's just doing their job allowed to have some time alone with his family? And Mysterio was one of the happier endings. Also in 2021, Philip Thomas, who claimed to be a fan of WWE star Sonya Deville, became so obsessed with her, despite her having never spoken to him, that he went across state lines with intents to kidnap her. Not unlike the WWE stalker, a crazed fan with a history of harassing the female stars with a long stretching record of trespassing at the performance center, even getting shot once for it. The boundaries between celebrity and fan really need to be reinforced here. Recently, WWE's Intercontinental Champion Ricochet got some flack online for stating that while he's happy to take photos with fans in passing, he's no longer going to sign autographs for people camping out at his hotel or hassling him at the airport. This led to some divide online as there are fans who believe they pay his salary, they don't by the way, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia does, and that if he wants to keep his job, he should be available to them 24-7. Which, my personal response is once again, fuck you! I think CM Punk summarized this perfectly back in 2014. You didn't buy my fucking house, Apparently motherfucker. They Apparently they did. I bought my fucking house. <laughs> Just because you bought my t-shirt, which I appreciate, thank you, mm -hmm. and I got a fraction of, of the money for that, you know. They didn't make me who I am. 
uh, WWE didn't make me who I am. I was CM Punk before I got there, and I will not be defined uh, based on what I do for a living. I don't think anybody should be. I've had a few jobs. I've been a strip club DJ who had to constantly be harassed by drunks who want to find out how to hook up with the dancers. I've been a cook who was volunteered on more than one occasion to cater parties for family members that I don't like or particularly care for. I work in customer service now, and that means when I'm on the clock, I do my best to help out, but on my time off while I'm at home or traveling, I don't owe you shit. Just like a doctor or a plumber isn't required to come help you on Christmas morning just because you recognized a billboard with their face on it. I actually spoke recently with a good friend, fellow creator Bina, on this subject. She's a wrestling fan as well, whose channel aims towards rants and reflections about pretty much anything in life. Here's what she had to say. Ricochet said he, only, he doesn't want people waiting at the airport or you know, waiting in the lobby of their hotel rooms. I think this is pretty fair, considering that, you know, their private lives, they have private lives too. Yes, they work for the public, they work um, as celebrities in the public eye, but they should still have their private time. Recently, uh, Douglas, uh, Shane Douglas actually um, commented on Sasha Banks, who did not want to be bothered in airports and things, and he said, you know, go be a waitress, go be uh, an accountant, go be a lawyer. She shouldn't have to r sacrifice her privacy for her profession. This is, you know, this is something that people dream of their whole life. And they should be entitled to a private life as well. I think it's ridiculous, the height of hubris, to think that we as wrestling fans own them, that they're our property. Yes, we pay for shows. And yes, there are our autograph signings. They, you know, they do public aut autograph signings. Go to one of those. Why do we need to rush them at their hotel room? It just seems a little bit um, ridiculous to expect that we would be, you know, stalking our favorite wrestlers. They should be they should have a right to a private life. We don't pay for them to, you know, to to basically be our property. They're not our property, they're people who work. If you're a doctor or a chef, you don't expect people to rush you at your car and expect them to serve you food or, or you know, treat you or, you know, uh, medically. Um, and that's the same thing with wrestlers. Um, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm a huge Shawn Michaels fan. I'm not gonna fly to San Antonio, go knock on the guy's door and expect him to sign an autograph. Sonya Deville, who had somebody break into her house and try to kidnap her. Just because she's a celebrity, just because she has, you know, um, this job does not mean that we have the right to go to their private residences, homes, to be waiting in hotel rooms at four in the morning. These guys are tired. They're traveling around the country, you know, um, so... I, I think that they are entitled to a private life. And yes, if you see them down the road, they're, you know, they're pretty good about waving or doing a picture or whatever, but don't, you know, harass somebody like Randy Orton's fan who was harassing him at the gym. He goes to the gym to work out just like everybody else. He, you know, he punches his clock, he does his job, and then he wants to have his private time. You know, I was going to be a jerk and point out that Shawn Michaels doesn't live in San Antonio anymore, but you can find him in Florida these days. Other than that, everything Bina says is true here. This isn't a political divide thing because somebody is going to think this is some radical left-wing ideology. Truth is, the rich and famous on the right also deserve privacy when they're not working. We are not our jobs, we are people. Our jobs are what pay our debtors, not our entire identity. But listen, I do get it. With social media right now, it is easier than ever to communicate with the people we hear on Spotify or watch on Netflix. But holy hell has this ease of access diminished the value of those experiences. Do you remember as a kid, when you were young, if you got to meet your hero, it was a life-changing experience. You would be able to tell that story for years. Nowadays, if you talk to somebody famous, it's so you can tell them on Twitter that their character that they portray on TV is an asshole. I'm not saying celebrities are above ordinary people and shouldn't ever be approached. At the same time, they're not underneath ordinary people either. They've got a job to do. If they're doing their job, let them do it. If they're off the clock, let them decompress. Just like a cook needs time to unwind when they leave their restaurant, or a tradesperson may want to veg out on the couch for a day before getting back to their routine. In the case of Mike Tyson, if he's in front of a camera crew or inside a squared circle, all he owes the audience is entertainment.
If he's on a flight, the only people he owes anything to are the ones who sold him the ticket. And if he's already in the seat, that means he paid his part, just like you. So maybe give him some of the same damned courtesy you would expect from the guy sitting behind you as well. Now this is all just my opinion though, and I do want to ask, because this topic is a controversial one. Where do you stand on this matter? Did this fan go too far, or did Mike Tyson lose his cool? Personally, the answer is yes to both, but one's a whole lot more understandable than the other. On a greater scale, when it comes to the celebrity fan divide, do you think actors, singers, performers in general should be more open and accepting to fans in public? Or should fans offer up some more courtesy and respect to their privacy? Let me know what you think in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more, because I want you to be a part of this conversation too. For now though, I better get my shoulders off the mat, so thank you for tuning in to Jobbed Out. I'll catch you next time.